I came up with the idea of reward when I was in university in America. And I had a girlfriend in Miami that I was flying down to see from, from Boston. And it was expensive. And what I found out is if I changed my telephone to MCI and if I changed my credit card to Citibank, I could collect AA Air Miles or the American Airlines Advantage Miles. And basically by changing a couple of my consumer behaviours, I was able to get enough Air Miles to fly down to Miami for free. And at the time, my girlfriend was my passion and I was willing to change my consumer behaviour in order to have my passion for free. And that kind of triggered the concept. So when I came back to the United Kingdom um, and I started working at Arsenal, I was looking at ways that fans could enjoy their football for less and it was becoming more and more expensive for football fans to go to games. And um, I related it back to that passion that I had and said, well, you know, if we could get them to shop with retailers that we recommend and that are relevant to them. So I'm not saying to spend any more money or, or, or spend in places that you wouldn't already spend, but spend in the same type of retailers in the same type of sectors, then those retailers will pay us a commission and we can use that commission in the same way that by using my credit card and by changing my telephone, we could use that to then fund, instead of airline tickets, fund um, football tickets. I think that where we've got to today is through all the mistakes that we made. And some of them were expensive. Um, and some of them threatened to kill us. And, and others actually uh, were easy ones to overcome. And it was a combination of all those things that came to a pricing structure where we offer the program on a success basis. So we say to retailers, we'll only charge you when we drive you footfall, and therefore it's on a success basis and it's a percentage of sales. Um, to the uh, database suppliers or, or clubs, we say to them, this is not going to cost you anything because we're going to make our money from a share of the commission from the retailers. And to the consumers, we say, this isn't going to cost you anything. This is um, something that is free of charge for you to participate, and all you need to do is shop at, at our retailers in order to be able to be rewarded. So the success-based the success model came about from a need in the market for something that wouldn't cost people anything. You can do surveys and you can do reports, but you can't get uh, information like frequency, um, ATV, socio-demographic information, engagement with the brand from customers who are predominantly promiscuous and anonymous. So you have a lot of people who walk into Boots one day and spend 10 quid on a card or with cash and then walk into Superdrug the next and spend the same. And neither of, neither of the retailer knows who that person is, how often they come in. They're anonymous customers. And in today's world where um, it's almost more important to gain, sorry, retain customers than to gain customers, retailers are looking at ways to understand who their customers are, to communicate with them in a more relevant way, and to try and build a stronger relationship with them any way they can to ensure that they shop or continue to shop with their brand rather than the competition. The loyalty industry is a counter-cyclical industry. And what that means is that it usually does well in an economic downturn. So it started back in the times of food stamps uh, after the war, where retailers would offer consumers food stamps if they purchased products from their stores rather than the competitors. And then we saw the evolution of Green Shield stamps and then um, Tesco Club Card launched in an economic downturn, Nectar launched in an economic downturn, and have, uh, have been very successful for two main reasons. One, consumers are looking to maximise the value of their spend. So if they've got a lot of points, they want to redeem them for products, then they don't have to spend money. And retailers are desperate to try and gain and retain customers, and often by participating in a loyalty programme, they're able to achieve those goals. So. We're in a, in a rather fortunate position where we're looking at the economic downturn as a, as a fantastic opportunity for us to take advantage uh, of the marketplace and, and really grow our business significantly. In 2005, we developed a new technology along with our friends at Lloyd's TSB and First Data Corporation. 
And the technology was something that we believe is uh, quite revolutionary in the loyalty industry. Um, the technology basically turns any payment card in your wallet, credit or debit card, into a tracking mechanism when you shop. So if you register any of your cards with a program, a database, so for example, if you were a supporter of UNICEF and you joined the UNICEF um, Give for Free program, you would register your cards, you could register your, your husband's or your boyfriend's or your, your wife or your girlfriend's cards, and as well as your own. And then any time that they shop at any of our participating retailers, our technology picks up those card transactions in those retailers. We're then able to invoice the retailer for a commission and then use that commission, in the case of UNICEF, to donate uh, money to villages in Africa or, or any of the causes that, that they're promoting at any one time. Or if it's in the case of a football club, we'll pay for your season ticket with that commission that the retailers offer. To any business, are your highest spending customers your most important? Or perhaps is it the customers who have been with you for the longest period of time and over a longer period of time become the most valuable? I think you've got to work out what type of business you're in. In, in our business, obviously everyone, everyone loves the fact that you've got high uh, spending customers. Um, but in loyalty, it's a marathon rather than a sprint. And I think that you've got to make sure that the customers who are good loyal customers, who are uh, spending on a regular basis with you, you've got to take care of those guys. And I think that to, to not take care of those could be to the detriment of your programme.